there is one idea in section 5-7 that we want you to know, and it's the hinge theorem. And to introduce it, I'm going to use a geometry sketchpad file, and you'll notice the measure of length AB and the measure of segment BC will always stay the same. Okay, but, the measure, but angle B and the length of CA will change. And it's a pretty simple idea. All it says is that if angle B is larger, then the side opposite, CA, will be larger. If angle B is smaller, then the side opposite will be smaller. Okay, that's the hinge theorem. So what it says is if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle and the included angles are not congruent, then the longer third side is opposite the larger include, included angle. So if I have two triangles that, um, where I have two sides that are congruent and the included angle is different, then the side that's longer is the side that has the larger angle. Okay, so let's use the hinge theorem. Which of the following statements must be true? Now you'll notice that this side is congruent to this side, and this side is congruent to this side, and the included angles are different, so I can use the hinge theorem. And what it says is that the longer third side will be opposite the larger included angle. Now in this case, this is 90, and this is 70. So this is the this is the larger included angle, so opposite it, SK, must be longer than UY. So SK must be bigger than UY. Okay, one more application of the hinge theorem. Um, the diagram shows the position of a swing at two different times as the speed of the swing ride increases. The angle between the chain and AB increases. Is the rider farther from point A at time one or time two? Explain how the hinge theorem justifies your answer. So down here we have time one and time two. Uh, we will notice now that AB will stay the same, okay, and the length of the chain won't get any longer, okay? The only difference is angle one and angle two are different, okay? And the question is, is the rider further from point A at time one or time two? Well, at time two, there's a larger angle, so this must be lo longer um, than this. So the answer would be at time two, it's longer by the hinge theorem. Now the converse of the hinge theorem um, is also very similar to this idea, that if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the third side, and the third sides are not congruent, then the larger included angle is opposite the longer third side. So now we're looking at the three sides and the um, triangle that has the longer third side will have the larger included angle. So let's use the, the converse of the hinge theorem. The question is what is the range of possible values for x? Now using the hinge theorem um, we're noticing that this side's the same as this side, and this is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So I have two congruent sides, and the third sides are not the same. Okay, in fact, um, this one is larger, and so 60 must be larger than this included angle. So 60 must be bigger than 5x minus 20. Okay, now this will give me my upper bound or my, my, the largest possible value that x can be. So I'm going to solve this inequality by first adding 20 to both sides. And I have 80 is bigger than 5x. I'll divide both sides by 5. And I have x must be less than 16. Okay, or the biggest that x can be is 16. Okay, now um, if you think about this, you know that the angle angle T U S must be bigger than zero because angles can't be negative. Okay, so I'll find the smallest that X can be by saying that um, 5X minus 20 must be bigger than zero. Okay, and I will add 20 to both sides. 
and 5x is bigger than 20, divide both sides by 5, and x must be bigger than 4. Okay, so um, to answer the question, what is the range of possible values for x? Um, x must be between 4 and 16. Or if you write it, write it like this, x is less than 16 but bigger than 4. Okay, and that is about the hinge theorem and the converse of the hinge theorem.